Let's get the show started, shall we? Live from BC Children's Hospital in Vancouver, it's the 29th Annual Miracle Weekend. Yes, welcome inside BC Children's Hospital. You know, this place serves one million children living in BC and the Yukon. They treat the severely ill kids, of course, but they also take care of all those smaller things like the bad ear infection that happens at 2.30 in the morning or a broken elbow. Those things can feel like big things to little people, sure. I'm sure. So for the next four hours, all day tomorrow, we will give you an insight into so many heroic stories and how this hospital is such an important place to many families around beautiful British Columbia. You know, the care Caregivers here at BC Children's Hospital are always striving to use innovative ways to help their young patients. That search for new treatments is certainly paying off for one BC teenager who's reaping the benefits with every step she takes. Point those feet at the back, back, back. When Michaela Ironside jumps, both feet now touch the ground every step in sync with her peers. I don't feel like an old man anymore because like my back doesn't hurt. It just feels normal now. <laughs> Okay, should we have a look at your leg? It's a new normal for the 13-year-old. Michaela was born with a bowed tibia. Her right leg grew seven centimeters longer than the left. Like people would ask me like, did you sprain your ankle? No, no, <laughs> my legs are just weird. <laughs> In 2014, Michaela was one of the first patients at BC Children's Hospital to have her legs lengthened using technology introduced to the province by Tony Cooper. He's one of five doctors in Canada specializing in the treatment. That's stuff. Dr. Cooper broke Michaela's bone just below her kneecap and fitted her leg with a structure called a Taylor spatial device. Every night, Michaela turned the pins. Her bone grew by a millimeter. The human body is amazing, and we just we take advantage of that to give them a normal leg at the end of the day. Because what happens is after we cut the bone, it's trying to heal like a fracture would, and then we're not letting it heal, we, we keep stretching it. Once it's all healed, you can see how it's almost new bone. And it's wow. just like, it's so filled in. After a year of treatment and physiotherapy, Michaela's legs are the same length. It's so exciting how it's all finally better after a year. She's one of 30 patients whose limbs grew with Dr. Cooper's help. He says the technology is not only revolutionizing care, it's building children's confidence. They grow five centimeters when they lengthen them, but they, they seem to grow even more because they come in, their heads are held high and they're, they're smiling. Wow, an amazing story. I have the Ironside family with me starting at the far end. I have Melissa and then dad Robert, of course, Michaela and mom Joanne. Thanks you guys so much for being here. Thank and you. congratulations, Mi Michaela. How does it feel? That video was from six months ago. How's your leg doing now? It's so great. I don't, that video is only from six months ago, but like, I feel like I've come so far and like, I've done so much stuff and I'm just like so happy about it. <laughs> How did it feel going through that and knowing what was going on? I mean, your skin, the muscles, the bones, all stretching like that. It, it was kind of, I don't, I don't like to think about it because like, I don't know, I was kind of cool with it, but like when I start like overthinking it, it's like, what is happening inside my leg? Mm -hmm. I don't know, it was just like, it's like a, I don't know. <laughs> Dad, obviously this has made a big difference for Michaela. What have you seen? Oh, it's made a huge difference to her. Um, just watching her dance, she always wanted to do ballet. And last night we were at her dance recital. She was up there doing her ballet. It was absolutely amazing. I am so thankful. And, and that's really what this weekend is all about, is helping these young people to become the best that they can be. It's, that's all I can say. It's wonderful. And uh, we're watching the donations come in. Uh, Joanna, you've done something a little bit different, uh, something that BC Children's Hospital is very <coughs> thankful for. Uh, tell us how you're making a difference here. Oh, well, uh, we, uh, we'll share the mic. Yes. <laughs> um, we were updating our, our will, and just uh, as, as part of the process, we were asked about any charitable uh, bequests, and uh, just made sense to make a donation to Children's Hospital in my will. And uh, while we do give to Children's Hospital regularly um, throughout the year, um, certainly in my will, I'm able to give a, a much larger donation. And it was really simple. I just contacted Children's Hospital. We wanted to specifically 
donate it to the orthopedics uh, area. So I contacted the hospital just to get the correct wording to put into into my will, and uh, now it's done, and it, it'll be a you know a, a much more significant amount that'll be given to Children's Hospital down the road. So we're just so grateful. It's been truly life changing for Michaela and our whole family. It's fantastic. Congratulations, Michaela. Great to see you. Great to see you uh, dancing. Uh, good luck on the stage. And thank you uh, to the Ironside family, Joanne, as well. A planned gift is certainly one way that you can give uh, legacy gifts. They're very thoughtful, uh, an amazing way to give to Children's Hospital in the future. And there are many reasons, of course, to consider giving legacy gifts. Here are a few of them. When Ben was born, he was born at 26 weeks, and he was pretty small. He was one pound, 10 ounces, and he um, needed lots of care from BC Children's Hospital. I wouldn't have a wife or a son right now if, if it wasn't for Children's Hospital. Yeah, we were very lucky. Perfect. Right, little man? <laughs> Our daughter, Karen, was a nurse at Children's Hospital. She just loved her work. She became sick with the cancer, but eventually she, she left us. Miss her all the time. Well, Lori was the youngest of five, and when she was about two, she said, hurt, mommy, hurt. And when I went to look, it was a lump on her hip. She had something called a neuroblastoma, which was sort of cancer of the nervous system. She died two days before her third birthday. At the age of four, I was hospitalized for two and a half years. The challenges in my early years made me more interested in helping others. I strongly believe in the plan gift. When I'm gone, I will still be able to support the hospital. We were able to set up our will so that a percentage of our estate will all be going to Children's Hospital. We said we wanted to leave something to them as a legacy. We purchased a life insurance policy that's going to kick in once when uh, we kick out. <laughs> I just decided I would leave something to Children's Hospital because of Lori to start with. And, well, I don't think you can ever deny a, a plea for helping children, can you? You have to do it for the kids. It's all about the kids. We knew right away that we wanted to donate to Children's Hospital because they had done so much for us. And we know that no matter how much we're able to give, it'll be a donation that'll be appreciated. I hope to inspire my daughter to give as well and to help to make a difference. The kids will remember us for all the right reasons, how we lived and how we want them to live. That's our legacy. It makes me feel wonderful to help other families like ours. Our other kids um, are very proud that we're doing this in Karen's memory. We're still looking out for her. It's good therapy for us, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> We are pleased to introduce you now to our 2016 champion child. I had a chance to chat with Aiden Chin earlier this evening. Five years ago, cancer tore apart Aiden's world and forced him into BC Children's Hospital for weeks at a time. But you know what? Cancer couldn't break the deep bond Aiden had with his brother and his friends. In fact, it did quite the opposite. I don't expect my cancer to come back. It's a new chapter in my life. I guess there is a sense of being a child, being a teen again. So there are times when I do feel free. I don't think I could ever fully go back to what it was like before. Bren was seven years old and I was only 11, so we both were just kids, right? I had no clue. I, I, I heard the cancer word. I was just like, what is that? Okay, maybe I'm gonna see him uh, tomorrow. My eyes kind of started opening up and I was just like, Aiden's not gonna be here for a while. I'm only gonna see him maybe a couple times a week. 
It just kept on going in my head, like what if he was not gonna make it? What if I wasn't gonna see him at home anymore? There were times when I was feeling really sick and out of it and tired, and there were times when it wasn't always the chemo, it was about how other patients in the hospital were doing. Like, I've been through so much pain, but I won't be here for two weeks. They'd be here for six months, you say? And I was sad that there were other patients and there were other children that were younger than me going through cancers that were harder than mine. Basically, from that point on, I was like, why don't I try to get through it and then hopefully come back, help out. That's what I've basically been trying to do since I finished treatment. I got to join this club at the hospital called the Oncology Teen Group Club. It's something that you can't find out of the hospital. As a survivor, I'm still part of the teen group. There's still a lot of support that I can give to them and they can give to me because there's an understanding that uh, treatment isn't over when you're a survivor. There's still um, an emotional side of things. You have friends that are going through it, friends that are, aren't gonna make it through it, and that becomes a reality for you. It's not just over. Brooke was a friend of mine that I met in the hospital, and uh, she became basically a, um, a sister to me. Brooke was definitely the closest friend that I had that I lost. The day before she passed away, I did get to see her in the hospital, and I did get to hold her hand talk to her and say goodbye and tell her I loved her one last time and I don't believe that you can accept something like that. You have to, I guess, learn to cope with it more. Before I felt like cancer was something that was rare, that one in a ton of kids would be diagnosed, but it's not rare and there's a lot of kids in oncology, children that are going through what you went through and pain that is um, unexplainable. I want to be able to give back to those that have helped me in the hospital that have made it so that I can go out there and be active and just live my life again. It's a really good feeling that I could just go home and do something with my brother now. Without Children's Hospital, my brother wouldn't be here, so I'm eternally grateful for them being there. I'm looking forward to staying connected to the hospital because it's been such a big part. Giving back and uh, pursuing the dreams that I have and being able to do that because of BC Children's Hospital. Miracle weekend coming it's to a close, but what a weekend it's been. It's time to check in for a big total, guys. It is. Let's so it. before we do this, though, I really would like to say thanks to all the volunteers working behind yeah. the scenes who helped us out. Um, yes. You've been amazing. Yes. It really, it really is a cast of thousands. So do we want to do this right now? Yeah, we do. Okay, let's do it. All right. <laughs> let's turn the numbers. Okay. Eight. Eight. Six. 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 Eight. 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 One. Yes, they do. Here's 
hoping someday what happens for you and the peace comes to you from above miracles happen with love miracles happen with love and with help from the angel and all of us miracles happen yes they do here's hoping someday what happens for you comes to you from above. Miracles happen with love.